Are people happy? Are they sad? Are they ready to run for the hills and ditch the industry? Are people digging in? And we were like, let's not have that. Turn on the mics. Get the light on. Let's not have this conversation until we're recording. FOMO is no mo. I'm so ready to unpack conference conversations if you're ready to dish with me. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about. Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys. Welcome to Higher Ed Pulse, your Monday morning energizer covering insights and trends in higher ed marketing and enrollment. I'm Mallory Wilsey, bringing over 15 years of ed tech and marketing expertise to your earbuds. And I'm Seth O'Dell, joining the Pulse with my own adventures from leading marketing at top universities to founding Canahoma, one of the industry's fastest growing digital marketing agencies. Each week, we bring you the kind of insider insights you typically only find over cocktails with your pals at a conference. It's fast, it's fun, and it's designed for you, the busy higher ed professional. You're not just listening to another podcast. You're checking the pulse of higher education. Higher Ed Pulse is part of the Enrollify Network, a robust collection of podcasts designed to help higher ed professionals like you grow. Explore our other shows at enrollify.org. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the next generation AI student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful and personalized interactions with students. Learn more at element451.com. Welcome back to the Higher Ed Pulse. Uh, this is your co-host, Seth O'Dell, and I wanted to start things off because Mallory, I think we have a birthday on the show, but it, it's not yours, I think. Is it safe to say it's ours? It is, Seth. We're turning five. Happy birthday to us. <laughs> Happy birthday. Now, like, this is five years for Enrollify is like no joke. I feel like that's like worth stepping back and celebrating. I mean, it's worth putting on these ridiculous orange heart glasses and five-year-old birthday crown. And so, if, listeners, if you primarily just tune in through Apple or Spotify, I highly recommend you go to YouTube for this one just so you can see how awesome I look right now. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'd say congratulations to the Roll Fine Network. It's amazing. It's just worth celebrating. It's a lot of years and a lot of great content produced. It's a huge milestone. I mean, we've been celebrating all month on Mondays on social. We've been dropping some of our favorite milestone moments. Um, at a conference at EduWeb this month, we actually took some of our creators and just drew some names at random from the attendees. And we took everybody out to a baseball game, which is exactly where this crown comes from. I I like Google or well, I Amazon, you know, the five-year-old birthday party things. And now I think like if anyone has a, a four-year-old turning five, I can tell you exactly what Amazon has. <laughs> Love it all the swag but no i will not wear this for our entire episode because i cannot take myself seriously but yeah i mean seth five years for any organization is huge like let alone a media network it's just it's so clearly worth celebrating yeah i totally agree why well, i love well kudos to Rome Fi, uh and it's great to know that five years is just the beginning i'm sure many more years are ahead uh, but as we think about what's ahead i do want to pause and talk about this week's topic so we talked about unpacking conference conversations. And the reason I want to move forward is you've been at a couple conferences recently. Obviously, you've put one on, you've attended another, and I have missed both. I've been home uh, with my daughter, I had a family trip planned, and I have extreme FOMO. And so we talked, I was like, I wanted to catch up, like, what's really going on? How are the conferences? What are people talking about? Are people happy? Are they sad? Are they ready to run for the hills and ditch the industry? Are people digging in? And we were like, let's not have that. Turn on the mics, get the light on. Let's not have this conversation until we're recording. FOMO is no mo. I'm so ready to unpack conference conversations if you're ready to dish with me. So let's let's do it, Seth. Um, let's unpack the two conferences I've been to recently, the first of which is the Engage Summit. The theme was AI Got You, and I was uh, the host and MC of that one, so I have plenty to say. And then um, more recently, I went to the EduWeb Summit, which was in Philly, and our um, creator, Alison Tercio, was the program chair. So it was so good to see her. We had some other folks out and about. But yeah, both both of the conferences were excellent from a program standpoint. What what do you want to know? Basically, I want to know is like, yeah, what were people talking about? What were some of the topics that were people, you know, there's always a little bit of buzz. For me right now, this is an interesting time of year. You know, it's a new fiscal year for most of us with July. I, so I always want to like, what's the temperature check? So actually, maybe I'll say that. What was the temperature check overall? Maybe what were a couple of the topics people were talking about the most? Yeah, so I think that one of the big things I walked away from 
thinking about was just how interesting the back half of this year is going to be for, for colleges and universities and the people who work on them. It's like all of these things that have been happening in the industry as well as outside of the industry are converging on each other. We have all of the, the fallout from FAFSA still having an impact, still causing stress. We have public perception of higher ed and the value of the degrees still causing stress, right? Still having fallout. Now the political environment is more charged than ever due to a number of the things that have happened over the last couple weeks. And, you know, it just seems like it's just all coming to a head. And I feel like I, I noticed people were more tense than they usually are. Like people go to a conference to like, network and unwind a little bit and have that beer with their friends. And and it just, uh, I don't know, especially at web it just felt like there was this little dark cloud looming over and, and people were kind of stressed out about what all of these things, when you put them together, are going to mean for the industry. You know, that's really unfortunate, but I think that's really reasonable. I know I'm feeling that in a lot of ways. I mean, the world is in an interesting place, right? And it's just, for whatever reason, it feels heavier than ever. So there's like a weight that folks carry. And so I hope at least folks got together, at least it was helpful to be around each other. For me, it's always one of the things that gives me energy is that, but not totally surprised, right? I mean, I think that, you know, people are tired. I'm tired. I get it. Uh, and definitely empathize with that that emotion for sure. It's like the saying, misery loves company, right? It's like, sadly, like, you know, a lot of people are all at least in the same boat. So there's some camaraderie there. But, you know, you mentioned like the turn of the fiscal year, which is usually like, yes, we turned to the fiscal year. Budgets have opened up again, et cetera. But because there's still a lot of uncertainty over filling the fall classes, mm -hmm. uh, the it seems like the CFOs, you know, the budget may have turned over, but things haven't been fully released yet. Or there are still a lot of um, signatures waiting on some very important projects or technology uh, spends. And it feels like we're a little stagnant right now in, in our abilities to start new things that may involve significant investment, like whether that's a brand project, a website redesign, you know, a new CRM, AI tools, et cetera. You know, that's, that's been exactly uh, my experience as well at Canahoma. And so like, why I always talk about usually the spring into early summer is what we call silly season, where like everybody's making agency changes around July 1st. Usually that's where we, we have our biggest onboarding of new partners. And this year, everybody pushed things to like late August, early September. And a lot of people are saying exactly what you said, that basically they're not finalized, their institutions are not finalizing their budgets until after they hit census on the fall start. And so they're basically like floating for a couple months this summer in this like unknown where they're operating on a potential budget but they're not going to actually finalize the year, which on one hand, I totally understand if you're the CFO, you need to know what, what your revenue is going to be. On the other hand, it means you're really starting the fiscal year three months late. And when it comes to a lot of these projects that are designed to impact enrollment, whether that's changing an agency or like you mentioned, building a new website or onboarding a new tool, you're taking away even more time for those initiatives to have an impact in the short term. And so it's definitely like, I think, added to a, like a layer of complexity this year that I've never seen before. Um, that like the silly season, as we call it, is like very much August, September, when in the past it really was much more June or July. Yeah, I'm hearing this from all sides. It was the attendees at EduWeb who were talking about this and the impact, but also like I had a lot of pals in the vendor hall who, whether they were working at other, other ed tech companies or agencies were kind of saying exactly what what you just said. So I, everybody is clearly feeling it. And I think what's really tough is in moments like this, you actually want to be over investing in marketing, not cutting those budgets um, or investments, right? Like that's how you emerge on the other side as a winner. And it it just doesn't feel like anybody's doing that right now. Totally. It's so interesting. And um, so next big question I have for you is, and you don't now donate names, obviously you never would, but anybody talking about leaving, like one of our obviously more popular episodes uh, a couple months back was about, you know, every CMO is trying to quit and just sort of like the tone and tenor we've been picking up from our peers. Is that behind us? Are folks sort of that like still in it, if that makes sense? Or was there little hallway conversations about, you know, new opportunities or, you know, maybe greener pastures? Oh, there were plenty of hallway conversations. I think they happened a little more at the Engage Summit, probably because 
for at least me personally, right? Like I know a lot of the people who attend that conference and they probably feel more comfortable coming up to me and having those kinds of sidebars. Whereas there were a lot of people, I'd say the majority of the attendees at EduWeb that, you know, were more mid-level career and I just hadn't had a chance to meet yet. So I, I had fewer of those conversations there, but at the Engage Summit, that was, that was, I, a significant amount of my hallway time was uh, talking to people since I've been kind of in all three seats on campus, agency, and now ed tech. The number of times I had the conversation about like, what are the different experiences like? Hey, you know me, do you think I would fit really well in a role like this? Or, hey, I have started to apply to all of these different institutions, you know, can you serve as a reference for me or, or it's full on happening. Then. I mean, it is, it is still, happening. okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, uh, I mean, obviously we only want people to be in the best places and like, it's always great when you can help a friend move into a new opportunity. Um, but okay. So it's not simmered down. If anything, maybe it's heated up. I, maybe it was our episode that caused it to heat up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we, we have brought it into the open. We have shined a light on a dark corner of, uh, of the present reality. Okay, other topics. What's trending up or trending down? When you think about your last couple of years of conferences, are there any topics that you're like, okay, this was the year that the people were way more talking about this, or like, I can't believe nobody mentioned this this year. So either way up, way down, what were some of the big swings in conversations uh, from years past? Great question. AI. It's, I mean, yes, it's been present at conferences and in conversations for the last two years. Well, and admittedly, the Engage Summit theme was AI Got You. So I don't think you could have gone to that one and emerged without hearing about artificial intelligence. But it was very noticeable to me at EduWeb, the number of conversations happening in hallways or inside the uh, presentations where people were talking about how they use the tool and what tools they're using and how they're finding efficiencies with it. Now, what was a little concerning to me, though, is that people are still stuck in beginner mode. And while, so Artis, our CEO at Element 451 and the co-host of Generation AI, he did the closing keynote at EduWeb. And I have seen him do this before in his other presentations. He asks the room, you know, put your hand up if you've used artificial intelligence. And almost every hand went up this time. I can tell you a year and a half ago, it was like two hands were going up, right? So that has totally flip-flopped. But then when we dug a little deeper into, okay, well, what are you actually using it for? That's where I feel like people are still stuck in beginner mode. It is ideation only. It is not actually um, widespread usage of integration with AI assistance or impacting site search or some of the other things that like very capably AI can handle. And we are already seeing use cases and success stories from some of the earliest adopters. Higher Ed's not exactly known for being an early adopter on anything related to technology. So I am not surprised. Seth, we might need to do a like biggest pet peeves episode or something because that yeah, would be well, one of mine. <laughs> But, let's do it. I'm yeah. in. But the fact that at least now some recognition that this isn't going to take our jobs, it's going to enhance our jobs was the big mindset shift that I found. I, you know, it's not totally surprising to me at all either. We've seen a lot of shifts on the AI front, uh, not on the conference circuit, but just myself. The three things from the past few weeks, I'd say. One, we've had multiple clients directly ask us about you know, how is AI currently being used or not? So like the clients are wondering like, are you using it and how? The second, I had my first contract that included language around our permission to use AI and not, and who has intellectual property related to items that are dropped. So it was like, I was like, okay, like, like once you know legal is getting on board, you know that this is like becoming more present. Uh, and then I'll say the conversation on my end has evolved. Folks are looking for like operationally, how are you using AI? Not how have you tried AI and where could we? So it went from like future, where could we use it to like, where are you using it? And so, you know, even for us as an agency, there's only a handful of places we are. We have a great tool. We use it for automating meta descriptions and helping with web management and some areas like that. But it's been very interesting. Like it's becoming more grounded and more practical. And so it's, it's really interesting that you picked up on that uh, as well on your side. 
Okay, Mally, did I miss anything else? I feel like we've covered the big stuff. Is there anything else to know? You know, I'm excited to see you at a conference this fall, hopefully at least one, if not more. But yeah, anything else that comes to mind from the conferences and, you know, what's the beat on the street from what you heard from where you've been? No, I mean, I think we've really covered all all the big things, you know, some smaller stuff like the silos are still out there. Um, you know, people are still under-resourced and understaffed. And, you know, in general, like people were really appreciative, I think, more maybe than in past years, but just like appreciative of the fact that they were even at a conference. Like professional development budgets are so slim these days. And like we started this episode talking about, like CFOs are, are holding back on, on budgets right now. So the fact that like there were a lot of first time conference goers in Philly, and I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. I love it. Well, for folks that I missed, no, I'm going to be out there this fall, at least at a couple. I hope to see you all there. And uh, until then, Mally, just thanks for slowing down to share with us kind of what you heard. It's always fun to know what is the buzz when folks do get together. So thanks for sharing. And as always, it's great to see you. Absolutely. And before we wrap up, it is our birthday week. I mean, you know, it we're is. Leos here at Enrollify, so we <laughs> celebrate all month. But you got to know we're really ramping up for that birthday week. And in fact, we're culminating all of this great stuff on a webinar on July 25th, which is actually the, the date that we were founded. So if folks want to join, just head to enrollify.org. We'll also drop a link in the show notes. But we have Day Kibbolds, Jenny Lee Fowler, and Maya Demishkovich joining me on a webinar on influencer marketing strategy on the 25th. And if you not, you can't just register, you gotta show up. And if you show up, we are gonna be giving away some really awesome prizes, including a seat to next year's Engage Summit. Oh, wow, all right. And a free That's access good. to the course that we announced this morning. So I'm not gonna give that spoiler away. You gotta go to the website to learn a little bit more about what that course is, register for the webinar. We'll see you all on the 25th and we will all celebrate our birthday together. I love it, Mallory. Can't wait. I will see you there and happy birthday to Enrollify. Woo, happy birthday. All right, bye-bye, everybody. The Higher Ed Pulse is part of the Enrollify Podcast Network. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month. And we've got a plethora of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our show helps higher ed marketers and admission pros find their next big idea and features a selection of the industry's best as your hosts. Learn from Brian Gross, Eddie Francis, Jenny Lee Fowler, and so many of your favorite leaders in higher ed. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the next generation AI student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful and personalized interactions with students. Learn more at element451.com.